Hi everyone, hope you had a good Thanksgiving break. Um, the three questions I'm going to answer for this uh, interview assignment um, are the first one is working with someone who was difficult to work with and how you responded to that. Um, the second question is going to be um, how would I respond to a particularly overweight white female patient who has you know, the big three, hyperlipidemia, hypertension, um, obesity, I think diabetes is there too. Um, and then if I were to respond to her differently based off of... Um, I think it was, it was like uh, her based off her gender and her race. And then the final question is going to be describe a time where I failed. Um, so for the first question in regards to um, what was an example of someone I've worked with that was very really difficult to work with and how did I respond to that? Um, I'll take it back to a pretty classic example for most folks in education. And that's the group project. Um, working with the group is, it has its challenges uh, and its rewards, but there was one particular event my senior year of undergrad where we did this um, project for our ecology class. We had to go out into vernal pools <laughs> um, in this really great wooded area by my school and like count salamander eggs and it was just very exciting. Um, I didn't think it was that exciting, but some people did. But regardless, uh, there's a group of us and some of us worked really hard to get this thing done in a timely manner and present it well. Um, I would consider myself part of that subgroup. And then um, there's about one one young man in particular who really just did not have any, have any interest in working and completing it and wanting to even be a part of this project. He was just there. He was ready to graduate, and this is our last semester of college. Um, but rather than sit and complain about how this one particular young man didn't want to do anything, I figured the best way was to be just giving him like clear tasks that were easy to accomplish, that it would make him feel like he's actually contributing pretty well. Um, but also help the workload divvy up and ease the resentment that was building between even myself and a bunch of other people towards this young guy. Um, fortunately, that worked. Um, just given the relatively easy data collection stuff, things like that. Um, it made him feel like he was a part of the group. I know that one thing I would, I don't think anyone likes is feeling singled out, feeling kind of you know useless when you're trying to work towards a goal. So I found that by um, offering up ideas of things that he could use to be proactive as opposed to kind of just letting him coast by, made him not only contribute in a situation where I could tell he didn't want to, but kind of helped ease the tensions between um, the group and this young guy. We ended up doing pretty well in our presentation, and fortunately I'll never have to go count salamander eggs ever again. Um, but then the second question um, and this uh, that I looked at was, how would I respond to a patient coming in um, who's severely overweight, has diabetes, hypertension, um, has bad blood cholesterol, all these things six months out, and I see her six months after she came in and I told her all those things you need to do and it looks like she's not doing it. Um, my response would, I would try to show empathy um, because clearly you know, these problems are there, they're still there for a reason, which means that re whether or not she thinks she needs to make a change, she's having a difficult, a difficult time doing that. Um, but I would try to remain firm in the um, expectations I have as her healthcare provider of saying that you're here and you trust my judgment and I'm telling you that there are certain things about your lifestyle that we need to change if you want to remain healthy. And I would probably ask her, like, do you want to like maintain a healthy lifestyle? Do you want to you know, have a long, um, healthy life with your family, spend time with that? Just kind of put it out there and let her know what's at risk because I think a lot of times we get down on ourselves, we forget you know, what's at stake when we abuse our bodies. Now obviously I would try to remain positive, but let her know that the, the lifestyle changes that are not taking place are going to directly affect not just herself, but her family and her friends and her loved ones and everyone that cares so much about her. Um, I think unfortunately a lot of times we get into this bubble where we think, you know, no one understands our problems and it's us against the world and, you know, maybe at this point she might feel like no one really cares. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe she just really is having a hard time. But regardless, that's going to be based on the individual response I see from this patient. But I would definitely think that not doubling down and not letting it go, like I would uh, definitely bring up the fact that I think I can tell we haven't really made a lot of progress. What is going on? Ask her ways that she thinks she can do to you know meet those goals that we talked about previously. And then if she's having a hard time, that's when I'd step in and give her some ideas and maybe talk about steps that we can, you know, small steps, really easy, like weekly goals that's going to help her get where she wants to go as opposed to just saying, hey, we need to lose X amount of weight in this amount of time. Uh, when I was a personal trainer, that was a lot of time I learned real quick that people didn't respond well to these big goals if they're overwhelmed with, you know, their 
particular lifestyle choices. So if you can give them small, easy to accomplish tasks, it's going to take them a long way towards their overall health and wellness. Um, now the final question was, uh, describe a time that you failed. So for myself, um, a big moment of that was me was the first time I applied to med school. I went, I interviewed, thought things went well, got put on the wait list. And then I found out, uh, last summer that it wasn't going to work out. <laughs> so you can imagine I was a little frustrated. Um, it's probably an understatement. But the good news is it only made it more clear to me that this is, you know, the life path I want. There's nothing that's going to get between me and that. So um, it helped. It kind of just, I'd say, lit the fire a little bit more. Um, so in that time, I've been able to go work on a master's program with some really uh, and really intelligent and hardworking people um, who all have the same goal of wanting to work in healthcare. Uh, it's helped me um, realize how much I do enjoy learning, even in a, in a setting that I, isn't exactly where I thought it was going to be. Um, and it, it gave me an opportunity to get further clinical experience, um, switching up my career. I stopped working as a personal trainer and then instead worked as a medical scribe. And that's been one of the, really one of the best experiences I think I've ever um, had in my short time, um, just working clinically. It's been great to um, just interact with patients, fed on work with some great providers. Um, and again, the, all these things have just made it further, um, further clear to me that this is the route, that medicine's the route I want to work towards. So while it might have been a hiccup in my kind of bigger plan when I was a bit younger, I, I take every opportunity I can to learn from, and I think it's only going to make me a better physician in the long run. Um, so those are my answers to the questions. Thank you so much, guys. Don't be too harsh in the criticism. <laughs> but uh, seriously, it's been great working with all of you. So good luck with all this, um, and thanks again. Take care.